Chan for Paul Sardar. Okay, well, we are here at the Cinnamon Lakeside Hotel in Colombo for a very special occasion. Mobita is launching their four new packages, four or five new packages for low-income government service and uh, all all workers of Sri Lanka where you are applicable, where you can be applicable to purchase the Mobita smartphone and at the same time a Mobita package that's uh, affordable and at the same time very convenient to use so it's very interesting to see how the digital revolution is taking over our tiny island and we're going to talk to uh, the minister in charge of that and ask him how uh, and what the government has implemented in the country along with their partnership with Mobitel to bring to you the latest uh, in everything IT so stay tuned it's going to be very interesting to talk to them We're with Minister Harin Fernando, who is here to grace today's occasion. So we're going to ask him how the digital revolution has taken over Sri Lanka. So tell me, how the digital revolution has taken over Ireland? Well, it's not going to be easy to answer in few words. Yeah. Uh, it's a broad subject, but what I would say is, number one, our priority was to get the connectivity done. Yeah. So the connectivity is what our first challenge was, and we are on the verge of getting that sorted. Uh, as I just said at the meeting, as, as at the launch here, uh, when I took over, we had only 25% of internet penetration in Sri Lanka, only 23% of smartphone usage. So what we really wanted to do initially was get that up. So therefore, I think we have got a roadmap for it at the moment. And basically, starting there onwards, we have done everything from education to e-commerce to everything that is planned out. Yeah. It's a massive story. So we are going to unveil the digital story of Sri Lanka in November with all the top uh, Silicon Valley top head companies like Microsoft owners, uh, Google co-founders, they're all coming to Sri Lanka just to support us with the program. So it's going to be huge. Okay, so that's very exciting to see how everything's really coming together. So communication is something that links distant communities together. It bridges people together. How have you partnered? How has the government partnered with Mobitel to make that a reality? Yeah, well, Mobitel is our national partner, so they, they have been in the, in the forefront with uh, supporting our courses. And it's, it's more easy because it's gasseted under my ministry, so it's easy for me to get them to implement what I want them to do. So therefore, they have been, uh, we have been synchronizing well, and uh, I think we are a very good working team because the Digital Infrastructure Ministry coordinates well with our vision. So Mobitel understands our vision and they, they are along with it. And I'm mean, not to say the other companies also are helping, so they're all on the same verge. So they're all helping, but they all want to grow. Where number one is connectivity. As long as we grow on connectivity, we give them more services, digital digitization becomes very easy. So, I mean, digital, I mean, digital, the word digital is about all about flow. So it's about getting the flow of knowledge, the data, everything. All right, okay. So, but one thing that pops into my mind is there's no point in giving people a smartphone and telling them you can use it as long as they don't know how to use it. The use of technology to know what you're using. Plus the content. Plus the content, exactly. How are you communicating that message across to, I mean, our suburbs, the distant communities? How are you communicating the message of electronic use, IT, education across to them? Well, certainly, it's a, it's a challenge. My, my ultimate motive is, is actually to go through, I mean, we, we have technical officers in, in yeah. every AG division, so therefore we're trying to get them to be uh, trained and we're going to have support staff doing that. But as I just said, technology is with all kids. They all know it. They all know it. And if every parent, I have kids, I mean, I don't know how they know it. They know how to use my phone much better than I do. <laughs> and and, and, and that's, that, that's, that's how the world has changed. You know, yeah. it's, it's fast changing. It's just that we are challenged. The, only the senior people are more challenged. And, and it's, just, it's just a matter of if you have a kid at home, he'll teach you in hours. 
It's, yeah. it's just simple as that. So, but yeah, you, you, you're correct because one might be the barrier would be the language barrier. So, so how do we how do we uh, bridge that gap is something that we're working on. But th there are certain apps where they can use it in single A's. So yeah. we, you're using all that uh, technology. And um, my ultimate motive is when the government can stand it to have a uh, a, a IT savvy guy in every uh, AJ division supporting that cause, going into the villages because we want to create our own. Uh, platform like an eBay in Sri Lanka one day so every rural community will have their own business doing through these oh, phones okay. doing through these devices selling their products you know that's going right. going every exactly so okay. so sir um, something that's very common I see in Sri Lanka is a cultural norm that holds people back from using technology you know the idea that maybe it's not really good for us maybe there's a lot of things in it that you know the whole cultural norm about it that that prevents people from taking, uh, experiencing new technology. How do you plan on breaking that? This is exactly what we should do from our ministry. So we, we need to convince people to change their mindsets, what technology could do. So I keep telling my farmers that they would know from this device at what time it would rain. They're like, wow, is that possible? <laughs> and I would say, yes, come, I'll show you. I say, sometimes I, t I told my uh, grammar servicers, I said, don't say anything. For one week, try this out. Just say at 2 o'clock tomorrow, you see this, I, I show them how it works. I said, show it to them, they start worshipping you, thinking you're, you're the weather god. Because, because you know, it, it's technology, so when you teach them, they'll, they'll realize the positives of it. So we, we are trying to do a huge drive, and we have the funds from our ministry to do that mindset change. So it's through advertising, it's through communication, it's through schools, it's through the younger age, giving them the device. It's about giving the device to the hand. The moment the device comes to the hands, the people start doing crazy stuff. So there are positive and negatives. So we have to be responsible, giving a device to a person that they use it for the proper use. So that, that's a responsibility for us as a government. This can go against us as well, but uh, I hope people are smarter and they will do the right thing. All right, so in terms of that, how have you um, revolutionized uh, IT? Uh, in teaching children, how have you added it onto their syllabuses? Because that's also another thing, you know, lots of schools, you know, in the suburbs, they don't have computer technology, they don't have enough technology to experience, you know, what the kids in Colombo would experience. So how have you changed that barrier? I've been very blessed, I've been very lucky. Uh, for the last seven months, I have gone to Silicon Valley thrice. Okay. I've gone to Microsoft, I've gone to Google, I've gone to Facebook campuses. I've met all the top leaders I would have never imagined that I could have met in my life. And uh, I have got so much of uh, contacts through certain Sri Lankan entrepreneurs who are in Silicon Valley, who have put me in touch with them and who are willing to invest on the Sri Lankan education. We will have this whole concept of a digital classroom. We want to teach our children from holograms. That's a completely different level. A student who is getting the same quality education at Royal College would get it at Munragala, Vallavai or Jaffna. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to build this country on infrastructure where our IT for, it's going to be conducive enough to have the faster speeds of internet, accessibility, etc. Then we want our children to have the education on computers. We want to replace the textbook into a Microsoft Surface Pro. So when they do that, they will be so savvy with their techie stuff, you know. Plus we want coding to be in our education. So every child would know to code. So what we want to do is when our infrastructure is ready, we want Sri Lanka to be a hub because we are closer to Middle East, we are closer to India, we are closer to Pakistan, we are closer to Bangladesh. They are massive, they are huge populations. So we want to start supplying for them. So one thing we want to do is our infrastructure to be in place. So we want fiber optic everywhere in Sri Lanka. We want the balloon to be up there so they'll have 4G. Then our students be ready with their education. So what we're trying to do is the 1 million jobs is going to be mainly through the IT sector, at least about 200,000 jobs. So we've been talking to many companies around the world and they are willing to invest on the education. So what we're trying to do is immediately we're trying to get 10,000 students ready anytime to be uh, IT savvy people. So we're picking them up right now and we're doing it. India has offered us to train about 500 students. So we have lots of uh, things working out for us. And it's quite interesting. It's very interesting to see how technology takes over Sri Lanka and it's very interesting to talk to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.